Welcome everyone to I Choose You, the Community and Health Benefits of Pokemon Go. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for uh, taking a break from uh, catching those sweet unknowns. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get right to the panel, introduce themselves, and what is your favourite moment of Pokemon Go that you've ever experienced? Uh, I'm Brit. I would say that my favourite moment was meeting my partner, but he hated me because I got a Mewtwo invite and he didn't. <laughs> um, so I would say it's probably the first week when it came out and everyone was playing and it was just everyone was really friendly and knew each other and out at night and it was just really lovely. Hi, my name's Tiger and my favourite Pokemon Go moment is probably my first X-Raid because everyone was super friendly and like because I was the only person who hadn't got Mewtwo yet they were asking me what team I'm on and they purposefully made the gym yellow for me and then they Aww. and then they took the phone off me and caught it for me because it was challenging and everyone was so friendly and I loved it. Hey I'm Zoe um I guess my favorite Pokemon Go moment was probably I bought a Ho-Oh um which isn't that big a deal but my partner's got a 10 year old and I, I show him Pokemon I've caught and yeah, got him to ho and he's like, lost. <laughs> like, finally, he thinks I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I am Zoe Two Dots. I am a Pokemon Go YouTuber uh, based in Newcastle. And my probably favorite Pokemon Go moment would have to be from this year, actually, at Chicago Go Fest. Just that was my first actual meetup and like meeting a mass amount of other Pokemon Go players. And then every subsequent event after that and stuff like this, like getting to meet the people has been the absolute highlight for Pokemon Go for me. Meeting, trading, raiding, and just seeing how everyone plays the game has been phenomenal. Plus, you know, the 100% Togepi was pretty cool too. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of, uh, of community-based experiences here. Uh, with the addition of raids and community days and trading, what has been the experience with the community and how do you think it could be managed to be built more successfully? Um, I think they've built it really successfully, um, especially having raids and having people meet up in large groups. You know, it was it was always um, like having laws before brought in groups of people, but this has really brought in a heap more people and especially community days as well. Um, it's really built a unique community because it's people from all different walks of life. Like it, there's old people, there's young people, there's people from, you know, doctors to people in retail it's it's all uh, it's all a vast variety of people from all different walks of life um yeah i completely agree and even seeing like online communities forming together like uh the reddit community called the silf road which goes into so much really cool detail about like uh, all the theory behind the game and things that are coming up is really neat um but also in terms of the local community going to community days and seeing people like going out and making sure that everybody else around them is hydrated and baking cookies for people and mm -hmm. it's just so good to see people like just looking after each other and stuff and being so friendly and positive yeah i um I, I work on a location-based game. I'm a, a game designer, and I, I didn't really start playing until the start of the year when uh, suddenly I found myself in this position where I need to understand um, how location-based games work. And uh, something I realised very quickly is that a lot of people who want to make competitors to Pokemon Go, because uh, most people who make games, they, we're gamers, um, and we think that there needs to be more competition or more skill-based action, not enough variety, not enough end game. And they miss the point of the design of Pokemon Go, and that is that it's built around community. Um, I think it kind of happened accidentally at first, a bit with the lures, um, but people really, um, that took off in a big way and really created this community. You'd, you'd go to um, like walk past churches and there'd be, uh, uh, lures going off and you've just so I, I think when they caught on that that was really where um where the game should go they did come out with the raids mm -hmm. with the the friends uh the trading and it's all been built to uh designed to allow players to kind of um uh, interact with it through uh rather than your typical work that you would do for rewards, uh, mm. more through social interaction. 
and uh, walking and, and being places. And if you're being places, it's places with other people. So I, I think I, I do have a lot, of, a lot of respect for how they've gone about this. I yeah. keep talking oh, on. No, but... I totally agree. <laughs> Um, for me, I was working full time when the game first dropped. So I, you know, downloaded the game at work at my desk. Like, no one's watching. But I missed a lot of that first initial, like, collaborative community play. So I couldn't play after work. I had to, you know, go home, get stuff done. I was, um, you know, started the channel, filming lots of things. So that left less time for play. And for me, the main community boost came when raids actually came out. So I had, you know, met a handful of people through the game, through lures or meeting up and being like, oh, I wonder if there's someone playing around here. When raids came out, I was like, okay, there's one down the road. Let's maybe see if someone's there. And there was just 15 people on a street corner. I was like, whoa, okay, we're all here for the same thing. And I've met and made some longstanding friends now. It's been almost a year now that raids have been out. And, like, we go out for birthday lunches together and stuff and, you know, make secret, you know, surprise gifts and things like that for Christmas. And that's purely because of raiding. If raiding didn't exist in the game, I wouldn't know these people most likely. Um, and it's really great that Pokemon Go fosters that community collaboration. So you need to have more people to take down a raid. You can't just solo everything or, you know, you might need to trade from a friend because we're all getting PAX unknowns. No one else in Australia is getting those at the moment. Like, I just really love what they're engineering for community collaboration. Definitely. Yeah. So Britt, you have a personal experience with like community and community day. So, um, oh, that was really loud. That's the, the Pikachu chew. Um, so <laughs> there's this guy and he, so he's made all of that by hand. All the little carts are made by hand. All, they've all got their own little phones. He painted it all. He painted all the, all the flags and stuff. And he has, he has his seven phones, um, taped to his bike and he rides around you know, on his little Pikachu Choo on community day. And, um, I just think it's lovely. He has like little lollies in all the little carts so you can get lollies off him. Um, and one thing it's also worth mentioning that I found when I was researching this is that before the um, friends and trading update, the average daily revenue for Pokemon Go was 1.8 million per day. Since that, it's gone up to 2.5 million per day. So <laughs> it's just really having that, that more collaborative, having friends and that has really made it picked up on the amount of players you know I go and see gyms and it's full of people who are level 20 level 30 and it's good to know that it's not just you know old hat people playing it's not just all level 40s um it sucks that there's more people playing because it means my gyms get taken down easier <laughs> um but it's also really good that there's there's new people coming through sorry so, I, can I just jump in quickly there there's yeah. that um I follow all this on app Annie and all that because it's my job and uh, yeah, there's been, um, since the, the friends and trading mechanics come in, it's re-engaged a lot of dropped off players and a lot of new players. And for a game that's what, into its third year, that's, uh, it's unusual. It's, and it's, it's quite big. So with uh, all this community stuff, uh, connections forming and stuff, like forming, uh, Pokemon Go has a bit of a mental health aspect as well. Uh, a, Anecdotal evidence, uh, some preliminary research has shown that it's uh, improved mental health states. Uh, what does the panel think of its effect on mental health? Um, it's definitely improved my mental health. Um, as someone who has historically had a lot of mental health problems, it's given me a reason to go outside um, to because, you know, obviously I've got to spin a poker stop every day. I can't sit at home. <laughs> um, it, it gives me a reason to get outside and walk somewhere. And even if that's just going and sitting in my car and putting a lure on, like it's still a reason to get up and get dressed and get out of the house. Yeah, um, I've got really, really bad ADHD and Pokemon Go has taught me so many things like patience waiting a minute <laughs> and a half for a raid to start was remarkably painful, but now I use it talking to people, which is really nice and like sharing tips and stuff. And it's helped me interact with people who I probably would otherwise be way too anxious to interact with. Um, really great for social anxiety kind of stuff. Um, it's had other really good benefits for my ADHD as well, which I have actually just completely blanked on, which is a shame, so I'll pass on. Um, I actually have autism. And uh, I, I know it's not the most obviously presenting, uh, but 
Um, it helps me manage uh, a lot of things, like uh, if I need to excuse myself from a situation because I'm feeling overwhelmed or I've just... Uh, I, I, it's it, a bit like, I guess, people who smoke used to just sort of say, I'm going to go outside for a smoke, but I, I'll just excuse myself from the situation and go for a 10-minute walk and, and catch a bunch of Pokemon. Um, or even just having something in my hand, like almost, it's almost like a, a fidget cube, just being able to sit there and um, I was in a, a, a another uh, event attached to um, Games Week yesterday and it was loud and I was struggling and uh, I could either have just left, instead I chose to sit there, or stand there, and just catch Pokemon and it really helped manage uh, those anxieties and that will bring me back off the edge of a bit of a meltdown. Yeah. Um, for me as well, I suppose Pokemon Go came out at a pretty crazy time in my life. Um, the last few years have been just, I suppose, ridiculous on the mental health side of things. Just had a couple really bad years. And so that first year of Pokemon Go especially, getting out, like I used to just sit at my office desk. I would not leave my desk for lunch. I would just sit there, get on whatever was on the internet and not walk. My back was stuffed up, like my mental health was stuffed. And when this game came out, the fact that I was like, okay, that's an hour full of walking every single day, getting out of the office. I didn't have that full social integration of it yet until raids came out, but then that additionally, like every single year with this game, every single month has just been better and better for helping like boost my mental health, um, the physical side of it, of course, getting out and walking, the social side of it, meeting new people, people that I can just, you know, message and actually talk to as a friend now, meeting all of the lovely international community online, people that send me their stories of, um, there's a guy actually in Melbourne who, uh, he moved to Melbourne recently with his partner, um, had or has uh, severe social anxiety um, and his partner was the only person in contact for him in Melbourne. Um, they unfortunately split up but if it wasn't for Pokemon Go, he attested that he probably would have just moved back to, to Sydney and not continued his career here in Melbourne. But the fact that he could, you know, use this game to go out and talk to people and organise a raid, like he's living a healthy and successful life here in Melbourne, he's overcoming that extreme social anxiety. So it works wonders in different ways. I'm sure everyone here has a, a story of how Pokemon Go has helped them, even if it's just, you know, made them smile for the day or if it's something extreme like, hey, I'm overcoming depression. Like, yeah, this game is blows my mind every single day. Uh, yeah. I, I think the um, I think the, the friends list has really helped with that because it's mm. nice being able to, um, I mean, I get a lot of social anxiety and I feel like I uh, kind of annoy people a bit. Um, but it's nice being able to send a gift uh, to somebody every day and remind them, hey, I exist, but I didn't have mm -hmm. to think of anything to write and it's perfectly socially acceptable to do this. Yeah. And find them the perfect focus yeah. stuff, like yes. one that really makes you think. And like sometimes you get a gift and it's like, wow, this actually like, proves you're actually really thinking of me. No, I'm, from, um, I'm from Sydney, so so uh, these Melbourne gifts are amazing. They're all beautiful murals. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen our sausage mural in Melbourne? So oh, <laughs> I want that one so bad. I was camping out near it and it just didn't drop a gift. <laughs> There's um, one near where I live called Cliff Diving Jesus. <laughs> uh, and every time I get it, I send it to Bragg's mum because oh, she loves it. I've been sending everybody the angel of death. <laughs> And I, I think exploring as well um, has is a massive help, you know, getting out and seeing places that I never would have been to before, um, especially, you know, things in the community that are important to the community that I never would have known about before. Mm. Um, and even, you know, there was um, one time where, where we had we had Discord and we had maps, but I won't talk about that because I don't want my account <laughs> to get banned. Um, and there was a Phoebus that spawned on an island um, <laughs> off, off, the, off the lake and it was low tide so I could make it out to that island and I like ran out and I'm not a very fit person. I like dropped my thongs on the beach somewhere and ran out to this island and climbed up the headland and I actually missed the spawn by about three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But there was someone else up there waiting for me and it felt like um, like the biggest loser. He's standing at this top of the hill. And he's like, what you didn't see is me puffing for 10 minutes while I waited for you to get here. So in amongst that puffing and the getting out there and doing stuff, uh, so that's the mental health uh, aspect. The physical health uh, is probably the, the thing we all think of first. Uh, how, 
is there any information going into the physical health benefits of Pokemon Go? So there's been a few studies done. Um, they're all pretty kind of preliminary studies, um, I guess, because the game hasn't been out all that long. There's not been any massive studies. But a study by um, Swansea University found that 79% of people said that it impacted their day-to-day -day movements. So they were either taking longer trips to work or taking different routes to work. 93% um, said that they it led them to exploring the environment more than they would before they played the game. And another 90% said it led them to going to new places or novel places that they wouldn't have gone to otherwise. Um, and just that it's changed the routes and the pathways that they use to navigate their environment. And I think that um, cities could really take this into account and use this when they're building public spaces to think about location-based games and how those games can bring people in. Um, because San Jose had an open street festival. There were 35,000 players there and they injected $450,000 into the local economy over a few days because they're all there to play Pokemon Go. And if more cities had, you know, events like this and events where unknown spawn, it, you know, it really brings in, it brings in people, it stimulates the economy and it has people thinking more about your community and more about your public spaces. So, um, yeah, I was about to ask you a question. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, so with, actually, no, it wasn't a question for you, it was a question for Zoe. Oh. <laughs> uh, with, game, uh, uh, with game mechanisms with uh, promoting walking, uh, oh. is that another thing that's coming up in development? It's, it's a huge thing in development, and uh, there's also a bit of a subsidiary of this, uh, and that is how do you design a, lo like a game that the very genre is based around um, walking, in effect, and being places with a very high uh, um, player base of people with various disability, and that includes mobility issues, um, and it's very tricky from a design point of view to solve this. It's really, really hard. Um, and I, Pokemon Go does all right at it. Um, I don't think it's perfect. I, I've heard a lot of stories uh, anecdotally that um, people who uh, with mobility issues would get friends to drive them around, and they would. That's how they would uh, get the eggs and get the walking-based um, uh, rewards. Um, but then, when it kind of got like the speed limits got capped and whatever, that that shut down the play. But at the same time, uh, from a, a design point of view, if people can just jump in a car and, and rack up 10Ks in two seconds, what you're talking about then is loot boxes. Uh, because that's really what an egg is. It's a, it's a, a soft loot box which has um, got a, a work to open the box, and that is to walk the distance. Um, limits how many you can have, at what speed you can have, how much money you can put in. I think they're starting to lean a bit too heavily on this now, or more heavily than they used to, but you know, a uh, company's going to make money. But um, the exploration, the, in, the inherent uh, basic element of location-based games is this, this idea of exploration and just getting out into the, into the world and moving around. And I think, I think they've been quite successful with that. I, I, I feel like I might be just rambling a bit now. <laughs> But no, uh, uh, the, the walking the walking mechanism is is hard because it's it's hard to solve. Um, at the game I'm looking at, we're we're looking at a um, a way to be able to uh, occasionally decouple um, walking to be able to uh, sometimes um, do remote play um, it, it, as a quality of life thing. It's probably going to be linked to in app purchases, and that's frustrating because then people with these mobility issues potentially have to pay money to be able to enjoy the game. Um, but it really is not, not something with an easy, easy answer. So, um, but I, I, think, I think the low level of monetization and the fact that they have uh, largely based a lot of the, the work for reward around this uh, physical activity. And I'm not convinced that, I mean, for myself, I've got good endurance. I, I don't really get my heart beat up by going for a walk. But I'm certainly a lot more active. I will spend my lunch going for a walk, uh, or, and that I think ties more into mental health. But for some people, that's a lot more activity, and it's important activity. And I, I think they've done well to promote that. I'm really curious as well. You're saying getting your heart rate up for a walk. The new announcement actually this morning for the new activity features, the oh, new yeah. fitness features in Pokemon Go. I'm genuinely very curious to see how this goes because. 
I agree. Like sometimes if I'm going for a walk, I'm not going for a fast paced walk that's, you know, you know, crazy for my fitness, but yes, I, endurance. I, I'm be, a fast yeah. walker and what Pokemon Go does a lot for me is manage my pedestrian. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but I'm curious to see if like this will adopt like the accelerometer. So, for yeah. example, if you are at the gym and you're doing something physically active, if that will contribute towards hatching eggs, so you're not necessarily having to, you know, be walking. There's different options there potentially for still doing activity well, and, and it counting towards your eggs. I'd love to see that's that. That's something they've done fairly well, and I'm a little concerned about with um, a few of these quest lines and whatever. Mm wanting you to walk 20 k's mm -hmm. and you have to do it to be able to get to the next part of the quest chain or you have to open this many eggs um, because a lot of the design so far has been very much you set your own uh, how you engage with it you find the parts of it which you engage with some people have eggs which are unopened from the first day because they've never cared about hatching an egg um, they just like walking around and catching the pokemon um, or uh, whichever, like the social aspect. Some people only like raiding. Some people mm, really only yeah. like like going to the gyms and fighting at gyms. You, you find how you want to engage with it, and I, I think it's it's that diversity of of ways to engage that um, that works well. And I, I'm just worried that there will be more emphasis on the aspects of this they can monetize more. I was really surprised with how much it actually did affect my fitness. Um, you know, when when I first installed it, I remember taking a screenshot of um, at the end of the tutorial and it says, now walk. And I took a screenshot and tweeted it and was like, I'm uninstalling this game. <laughs> um, but it's really improved my fitness. My fitness is still absolutely awful. Um, but I can, you know, I go for walks now, but... Um, like you said, I've actually got a really bad back and some days I can't walk. And that's how I was when um, when the Celebi quest came out and it was like, walk 10 kilometres with your Eevee. And I'm like, well, I really want my Celebi, but I can't do that right now. Mm. Um, and I'm, they, I'm not sure how great it is to lock people out of mythical Pokemon that people really want by relying too heavily on fitness. Um, but I know that you you your fitness has improved as well, has it? Oh heck yeah. Yeah. Um me and my partner, I convinced my partner to start playing Pokemon Go because I really wanted to uh, I said, I really want to go on walks with you and we can go through walks with nature, but really I just wanted someone to play with. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's gone really well. Now he's the one dragging me out of the house, so that's fun. But recently I kind of my interest in fitness with Pokemon Go has basically just become about how I can like get the most benefit out of Pokemon Go by like taking advantage of physical activity. And recently I've realized I can buy rollerblades and go really <laughs> fast with minimal effort. <laughs> but not fast enough that it will trigger the motion cap. Which is done, and I've, I've started rollerblading, it's done fantastic things for uh, my fitness, it's better than running because my joints don't get impacted or anything like that. It does have the slight detriment of occasionally nearly breaking my arm <laughs> and um, negatively impacting my boyfriend's mental health because he's constantly stressed that I will end up in hospital. <laughs> but these are teething problems and they'll go with yeah. time. You'll sort them out. You'll sort them out. Yeah. So that's where we're at at the moment. We're going to look forward. With a 35% increase in activity and usage since May last this year, the future Pokemon Go is bright. What do we want to see more of in the game and what do we want to see changed? Um, I guess they could help rural players more. Um, I'm excited to see Pokestop submission coming in um, because I think that that's really important for people who live in rural areas or in low socioeconomic areas because obviously in um, a lot of the time when especially when Pokemon Go first came out um, if you drove through low socioeconomic areas they would have one Pokestop or two Pokestops because the Pokestops were submitted by people who play Ingress and Ingress tends to be you know something that's played by people who are you know nerdy and they might be like so. My university has heaps, of, heaps and heaps of post stops, but the tape across the road has almost none. Um, and so, bringing in post stop submission is really going to help people who want to play but are limited by the area that they live in. Uh, can I just? Um, that's another huge thing that in the design uh, that I've been working on, we keep hitting up against constantly, and that is how can we make this 
how can we reach rural players? And it's a very difficult problem to solve because, in part, uh, a lot of a lot of the gameplay uh, relies on local meta games forming around gyms and and whatnot. And if you don't have the player base in an area, it's uh, it's hard to entirely like you can't artificially create that. So it's there's no easy answer to that that I'm aware of. So. <laughs> Um, I'm really excited for the future for a number of reasons. Um, recently, AR Plus came to Android, which, yeah, woo. Um, <laughs> and I got to take my first AR Plus photos on the Beldum Community Day, uh, and I took some really cool ones, including an Alolan executor from the top of one of the tallest buildings in <laughs> my surrounds, which oh, was so cool. I saw that. You saw that? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> um, and um, there was this thing that kind of... Um, some of the Niantic people have been kind of talking about for a little while, uh, which is like AR Playground, which is what looks to be, and what I'm super hoping is, the ability to take the Pokemon that you've caught and that you've still got in your storage out to places in the real world and like pose them or like, you know, get them to do stuff so that I can get AR photos of Mew on a really starry night or I can take Charizard up to like a dormant volcano or something. And like, I want to get a photo of everything I've got because I'm building a living dex in its like thematically appropriate environment and mm. then make like a gallery thingy of that. I reckon that would be so cool. That'd be phenomenal, actually. I I'm definitely agree. Like, I would love to see big ones of these, fingers crossed, the like, the, they're calling it like the playground, or at least it's been like yeah. titled that in like the, all the Japanese dev stuff, like that would be phenomenal to just take your favorite Pokemon. Like, I can't photograph Togepi, that's in an egg. It's yeah. my favorite thing. Been walking around with that for like 500 kilometers <laughs> and I can't take a picture of it. So I, that would be super fun if there's other ways to share like your, yeah, yeah. your, fo your photos and your memories and taking it to cool places. Um, I'm really keen to see an evolution of the friends list as well. Mm. Um, obviously that's just kind of like a side thing, tweaks to tightening that up and making it a bit more user friendly. Um, but at the moment, I'm just getting excited. Like every second week, there's something new happening in the game. There's constant updates. Like I can't imagine how little sleep yeah. Niantic is getting at the moment with just constant events, updates, changes, fitness, photography, Even everything. Even the fitness thing this morning, I woke up and yeah. that's what I saw. And I was like, oh, neat. Like, <laughs> every couple of days at the moment, I'm just waking up, opening the app and going, hey, that's cool. Yeah. And, and let's go. Evie and... Pikachu, Pikachu yeah. are coming out soon, and that's that sounds exciting. Mm. Another if you get a chance, well. go down to the show floor and try out the Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. I tried it this morning, and it seems really, really fun. But I, as, as a designer, the the area that I don't think they've like like it's got this amazing design space that they haven't really mm -hmm. explored enough yet is actually the modules. Um, at the moment, there's lures, mm. Mm. and there's this this uh, air, uh, to me an area that's screaming more um, content because it, it is a really nice social mechanism. People get together and they're like, hey, I'll throw a lure on, on this. Um, I, I'm not sure what exactly you expand this into, but um, I, to me it's, it's one of the good mechanisms for uh, that social and cooperative play. Um, I mean, there's not really guilds in the game. There's the three factions, but there's it doesn't matter which faction you are, you enjoy mostly cooperative community co like content together. It's fairly meaningless. It adds a little bit of, but um, yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think the modules, they could really do a lot more with and promote more of that social interaction. Mm. Combining what you two are saying, there's another AR monster catching game, which is Japan only at the moment, which is based on Yokai Watch. And one of the things that that lets you do is put down like a, what in Pokemon Go would be like a um, Pokestop seed yep. and it grows a Pokestop for a brief period of hmm. like for half an hour, an hour or something, um, which will basically puts down a temporary Pokestop, which would be really good for a module thing for yeah. people in rural yeah. areas. I, I, I mean, another thing they could maybe do is use it, uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with the, um, the PvP duels, but you could create a PvP area. Or that would be amazing. Like an arena, everyone yeah. comes down to the park and it's and, and we all battle, We all battle it out. Um, but there's something, um, one of the competitors, I'll mention one of the competitors, um, Walking Dead, uh, Our World, um, has a system whereby you can sort of, uh, it's a flare, 
And if you see the flare, you can tap on it and kind of get taken to the location of that flare. So you can bring players from a bit of a distance in to help um, uh, do, 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 do the thing. Do the thing. Do, do the, the thing. Pokemon. <laughs> and, and, and to me, this would be another thing which would actually help with the, um, maybe not the rural, but with some of the mobility issue. It means that you could actually um, go... Rally uh, around to this point. Yeah. 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 And, and people, somebody could maybe walk to the point and give you the option to be able to effectively go to the location without having to actually go there. Mm. Um, there would be, need to be some level of cooperation, however, but you know, that's what the game's about, really. With one, thing I, sorry. No, you can. one thing I really love about Pokemon Go is that uh, the individual goals vary so much. So mm. um, yes. for a while I was collecting gold gym badges. Um, I'm at about 160 gold gyms, um, but it gets to a point where that got really difficult because I'm having to go further and further away to get gyms and now there's all these new players that are taking all my gyms all the time. <laughs> um, so it's a lot harder to just stay in a gym for a couple of days. And then they introduced um, field tasks and I've really latched onto those and I've done, I think, four and a half thousand field tasks. Um, and, you know, every day I'll go out to my university where there's about 30 poker stops and I'll try to do every single field task on campus. And, you know, I know someone who's collecting level one Pokemon or level one Pokemon. I know someone who collected all different hidden power Pokemon. Um, I know someone who's collecting Pokemon that have even weights. So five kilo Pokemon, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and that, that's his thing. And it means that everyone else in the community is also looking out for them for him. So looking for um, stuff to trade to him. So I caught a five kilo unknown A just before this panel and I send him a message and he's really excited for it. <laughs> um, so it's just really, it's really unique and the way it allows um, people to work towards their own goals that can be completely different from anyone else's goals. With the sending a message, uh, so it's an external messaging um, service. Do we think that Neantic should include a, uh, like a more social like messaging to coordinate or would that oh. be too problematic? I, I'm, uh, in one level I'd love that, but on another level um, <sighs> I'm worried about toxicity and unwanted people uh, communicating with you. Um, another game that I work on is not location-based at all, but it's it's aimed for, aimed at uh, families, and we were considering putting it, making it as a network multiplayer, um, and we thought about chat and having um, just uh, emoticons, like kind of like what Lego uses in their children-based stuff. But you always get this problem of um, of toxic communities, and at the moment, Pokemon goes. Amazing, but I'm. I would be concerned about going down that avenue mm. personally. I would agree. I would hate to have a chat feature in Pokemon Go. I think it would just exactly like people that would be using it appropriately would be using it, but then other people that would want to misuse or harass or just you know like oh meet for a trade. Oh no, I'm not free. Well, I want to like you know just that kind of giving Stuff away or, your location to anybody yeah. is potentially <laughs> an issue something that was you know yeah. a default like three different things like keen for the raid and you're you know it sends yeah. up a little ping that you know one person's keen for this raid and oh three other people are keen for this raid when it hatches like something that's locked in and you can't change maybe if that was in like a messaging system but if it was just free chat i think it would go downhill pretty quickly unfortunately i think i think toxicity is also an important point to touch on um because you know, for the most part, the Pokemon Go community is really good, um, but mm -hmm. there are areas where it's not so good, especially on online platforms. Um, you see someone ask a question and people kind of dogpile on them. Yeah. Um, and it happened to me. There was a person in my local community who was making my gameplay really difficult. It wasn't an enjoyable experience for me anymore. Um, like going to raids wasn't fun because this person was ruining my gameplay. Um, but I'm lucky enough that I live in a big enough community that I could drive 20 minutes to the next town and and raid there instead. Um, but we're, we're lucky in that we have a very big community. Our Discord has over 600 members. Um, the Facebook group has over 2,000 members. Um, we've got a pretty active community and I worry that people who experience toxicity in smaller communities don't really have anywhere else to go. 
I, but for memory, Walking Dead has got, because they use a guild system, um, so you sign up for the guild and there's 20 other people in your guild and they're the people you're filing into the car with to go to the events and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure that they have a, um, they have a, a guild messaging system, but I'm, I'm really not sure how that's played out. Um, I, I can't see how it'd be uh, uh, more effective than just uh, the, the way the community currently just, just gets online and forms mm. its own communities and say, hey, how about we go down to wherever. Um, but I, I think a system like that would really need to rely uh, on having more of a, a guild-based system or some way to be able to curate who can actually communicate with who. And mm. I don't think that's the direction Pokemon Go would want to take. Fair enough. Well, that was my question. Let's open it up to uh, the floor. Uh, if there's any other questions that anyone wants to field to the panel, we'd be very much interested. But we're going to get a mic set up. While we're getting mic set up, I just wanted to read something out. So a lot of the stats I got came from Liz George, who's the Niantic community manager. She helped us out a lot preparing Massive this panel. Massive shout out to Liz. She is phenomenal. Seriously. And um, she sent us her favourite Pokemon Go moment, and I just thought I'd share it. So hers is... For me, my most positive interaction with our community was back when the game started, long before I worked at Niantic. I was living in Orlando, Florida at the time. On June 12, 2016, there was a mass shooting at a local nightclub called Pulse. Our local community was scared and broken. I didn't feel safe in the city that I loved and called home. It was heartbreaking to have so much pain and so much loss so close to your front door happening to your friends and neighbours. It was a tough time for Orlando. Two weeks later, Pokemon Go came out. I remember downloading the game day one, taking over local gyms, going out at midnight because there was a Pikachu behind my house and I still have him. I walked to my local poker stop and saw a guy there. I have no idea who he was. I walked up, we made eye contact, nodded because we both knew we were playing. We shared where we saw a few other Pokemon in the area and went our separate ways. During that time, Pokemon Go really changed the world. It brought a little light into a dark time, not only for me, but for our local community. People were getting out and doing things, talking to strangers, making new friends. It was amazing to see after such a terrible thing had happened, and for that, I will always love the Pokemon Go community. So that was sent to us by Liz. Yeah, Liz is, yeah, as you said, the community manager for Niantic, for Pokemon Go specifically. Um, I got the chance to meet her in Chicago and then again in Japan, and the amount that they love this game is she loves this game. The whole team put their heart and soul into this. I'm really proud of like all the work that they've been putting in and it's all been paying off this year just phenomenal amounts of work and I know that it's pretty easy to pile on when something goes wrong in the game um because of you know I suppose a previous history when certain things would go wrong we'd be like oh, come on guys but yeah I just want to call out and say thank you to Liz for giving us that extra info and story and you know really they're really working hard to bring this community further and further together I'm really excited for the future of this game like I'm so that excited. Actually, that actually brings up a, something that I feel like I probably should raise, which I was only made of, aware of this morning, and that is that there's an event for Autism Speaks uh, in Arizona raising money, and Autism Speaks, uh, as an autistic person, is not a good organisation. It treats it as something that needs to be cured. Um, and there's been some community backlash, and I haven't particularly looked into this yet, but from what other people on the panel were saying, um, it looks like they're taking the concern seriously and um, and really sort mm. of hearing the community on this. I'm not sure what the outcome of that is going to be, but um, yeah, it's it's nice to know that they're listening. Know that they're listening, yeah. and that that not a lot of games have. I mean, it's it's a, a game that is so dependent on community, so it kind of has to listen. But it's <laughs> nice that they do. Yeah, definitely. So. Excellent. Uh who has a question for the panel? Hi, how's it going? Um, uh, first, wanted to share a Pokemon Go moment, if you don't mind. Uh, Go I, 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 uh, when the game first came out, uh, I was in a lecture, and uh, somebody stood up and screamed, Nido Queen. <laughs> uh, and uh, most of the lecture followed, and the lecturer looked around the room, pulled out his phone and said, see ya. <laughs> um, I used to weigh close to 180 kilos, so two to five k's a day, uh, I think has kind of helped me. Um, as a player of some of the other Pokemon games, uh, one of the biggest 
concerns I hear amongst that community is that it's not the same. Um, and uh, while there have been uh, leaps and bounds towards uh, introducing some of those features that are similar, uh, it's still fairly different. Do you think they will bring in other features, particularly like, for instance, say, breeding? Um, and if so, how do you think that they might be different? I'd love it if they brought in breeding because it would give us an opportunity, like people who get to travel lots, like Zoe, um, probably have a lot of Pokemon from other countries. And Zoe could breed them and then give them to her friends and yes. eggs and stuff, <laughs> potentially, which I think would be really cool. It'd be awesome um, give away eggs rather than one special trade per day because yeah. it's taken a while <laughs> to get um, through those. <laughs> But I also think it's probably important to note that Pokemon Go is, well, it's still a Pokemon game, but it's not a main series Pokemon game. Kind of in the same way that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and stuff like that are Pokemon games, but they're not like the core RPG. So I think it's okay for them to be different and have different gameplay and stuff. It's a different audience almost. Or it's yeah. not like a completely different audience, but it's a different, you do, you play the different games for different purposes, I guess. Yeah, I think it's important to note that, that it is different and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and there's, it's brought a new generation of people into Pokemon. There are a lot of people who weren't interested or didn't know what Pokemon was before this and now they love it. They love the game. Um, it's really brought in a new um, people who wouldn't have played it before or would and. I think that's really interesting to see people who have been introduced to Pokemon through Pokemon Go. Um, just from a design point of view, uh, it's interesting because essentially it's a resource economy um, and it kind of uses a bit of an ecological model and all that and I'm not too sure entirely all the, the details of how they put this together but I suspect a system like that, although it'd be awesome to have, might have re uh, implications through the, eco uh, the economy um, in effect, um, so I, I guess it depends on whether the designers can make a fly or not. Mm, I would agree with that. One of my favourite things in the main series game is hatching and breeding eggs and giving away Pokemon to people and things like that, but I'm genuinely curious how it would actually integrate into Pokemon Go without affecting certain things like potentially sales or um, the, f I suppose, the, value the, the balance of, you know, if, if a Snorlax spawns or a Dragonite spawns, you're like, oh, that's... I don't say that often, but if you could breed 40 Snorlax. And if you have to trade with somebody who's been to Europe to get that, that mm. Mr. Mime, um, does anybody have a Mr. Mime? Brad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need one to finish the <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see how it would but, actually fly. But that is actually a, a, a motivator, a driver that they rely on. And, I mean, each, each new region they bring out, there's... There's regionals for that reason, and mm. making that too accessible will devalue a certain amount of work. Or yeah. Thank you very much for your question. Anyone else? Excellent. Hi. Um, as someone who absolutely adores a certain particular type of Pokemon, <laughs> so when basically earlier this year when Gen Three was released, I was super psyched for Ralts. Do you reckon they should do a Ralts Community Day? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everyone's just like, come on, guys, where's Rolls? Where's Rolls? <laughs> Give me my shinies. <laughs> um, I would certainly love to see it. I've stopped trying to predict or guess or even just make like funny jokes or assumptions about what's coming up. I said I would eat a hat if we saw a Gen 3 community day, and so apparently I have to eat a hat for Beldum. Um, whoops on that one. But just, eat, just eat like a little hat. I'm going to get one of those like cake novelty cake. chocolate hats. Get a cake made that's the shape of a hat and then just eat the whole cake. I want some cake. Let's do it. Um, but uh, I'm, they just keep like changing our expectations for what might happen for Com Day. I think ever, a lot of people have been asking for it. And again, as we've said, like they do listen to what we have uh, requested. But I am curious because considering it does evolve uh, the male form in Gen 4 as well, they're just saying like, you know, the economy of, um, I suppose, rarities and things like that, if that is something they will bring out that sounds like there's your Gen 4 evolution done overnight. But I mean, it is a nice shiny. So. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Anyone else? Excellent. Hi, how are you going? Um, I've got a 13-year-old that I play uh, Pokemon Go with, and um, we use that to do family time and stuff together, so it it's, brings us together, and we go out raiding a lot. Um, is that your experience as well? Do you, If you've got kids, do you take them out as well and 
they enjoy it as well? Or? Um, I don't have kids, but I do see a lot of people playing with their kids. Yep. Um, and But I've also seen the opposite where they've dragged their kids along and their kids don't want to yep. be there. <laughs> um, the, probably the funniest and also kind of sad was when Pokemon Go first came out and everyone was out playing and it's the middle of winter. And um, <laughs> these parents are playing and their, their kid just goes... Mum, I'm cold. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't quite have a, te- uh, a, a kid, but I, I borrow one on weekends sometimes. <laughs> um, and, and we used to get him out playing Pokemon Go um, frequently, um, but then he kind of lost interest in it because of Fortnite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. um, I'll just share one of the funniest moments with my 13-year-old was um, we were out uh, looking for Pikachu, and she'd put a um, incense down for that, um, and there was quite a few other people there as well. And she'd lured out a Dragonite and was yelling out to me. Next thing, everybody <laughs> ran over. There was about 40 people there came oh. over as well. Have you experienced that as well or not? Me per- personally, no. No, yeah. I, um, I didn't actually have a device that could play it properly when it first came out. And that's when, that's when um, my partner was actually managed to get um, Lucas out and about. Um, and... Yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen that kind of mobbing, I guess. <laughs> um, on the kid front, I don't have a kid, but there's one young kid in our community who is super into Pokemon. Like, he just loves to hurt me. See, he's like, I've got to show you the newest thing I caught, and I got this from the gift that you sent me. Like, here's the yeah. eggs that I patched and things like that. And just hearing him on community days, like, you just hear him off in the distance, shiny! <laughs> and you're like, go, little buddy. Like, it's just so fulfilling. And, like, he's probably one of the only kids of that I suppose like eight-ish age bracket in our group um I'd definitely love to see more of it but I know that there's a lot of families that will go and just do their own thing on community they were like they might go to the park together in areas so they're not with the massive group but definitely it's changed a lot of the ways that you know families do family time um going for a walk after school together and that's you know how the parents are playing games with the kids or um I really love when like parents are into what their kids are doing and kids can share it with their parents and there's good communication. It's like, oh, here's a Pikachu. <gasps> Let's get one together. Like, I love that. And then for the thing you were saying about if, you know, a Dragonite spawn and everyone's rushed to it, I think last weekend was a good example of that. Um, a Hundo Beldum spawned in the Botanic Gardens. Apparently, I didn't find it, but everyone just tearing through the tiny alleyways like to, to go and try and find this Hundo Beldum. We had the same thing. Um, uh 100% Beldum spawned also in our botanic gardens, Ooh. which is right next to the uni, um, up in Wollongong. And there was just heaps and heaps of people running for it, and mine was shiny. Oh. <laughs> and I was very happy about that. That's amazing. And the father and his kid who found it were also the ones who like, got a shiny as well. So that yeah, yeah. So bunch he, of kids. he found it and posted a screenshot in the raid chat, and everyone just kind of descended <laughs> on, on this one area. Unsuspecting father and son, just like, what's their noise? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have time for one more quick question. We'll go all the way up the back. Hello, please don't hate me too much. I've never actually played Pokemon Go. That's okay. Um, but it's I work in a public nice. library next to a primary and secondary school. Um, I don't think we've got a Pokestop or anything there. Um, I was wondering if there's any do's and don'ts you could share with fostering a Pokemon Go community in the library. Right. So it's actually quite challenging because I think it's the rule for the whole game is that you can't have Pokestops at schools. Yeah. Universities, yes, because they're tertiary education institutions. But anywhere where there's going to be large congregations of minors, like a you school. can have them at libraries. Oh, libraries is yeah. the library are, are an automatic. Is the library a school library or a public library? Public library. Matthew. Then, you, then, then you should be able fine. to get a focus stop there. Um, um, I would suggest um, trying to get in with the Ingress community and ask someone in the Ingress community, "Hey, can you submit some focus stops here at the library?" Um, apart from that, have you considered running um, like hunt days? So set up maybe open Pokemon Go and map out a kind of area, find an area that's got a lot of Pokestops um, and kind of like what what San Jose did and what a couple of other cities have done, they've mapped out a certain walk and you can walk along there and they'll put laws on all the different stops so that people can walk around this one area and catch all there. Mm. You could do a scavenger hunt. Um, yeah. And, and, and lures, um, I know a lot of businesses will keep themselves well stocked in lures if they've got themselves flagged and just try to keep people staying there. But if you've got it in your budget and you do get a poker stop, um, 
I'd recommend um, prepping lures. Yeah, lures yeah. Keep, yeah, keeping a good supply of lures going. Yeah. Um, I suppose other things for fostering uh, the good community is just to let people know that you are doing it and you're active in it. If there's, you know, even a little post that says like, hey, this is a Pokemon Go friendly space or just little bits and pieces people know, oh, if there was a Pokestop there, it's cool to hang out in the library and to actually play here. Whereas some people might think like, oh, if we get in trouble or kicked out of the library, if we're, you know, loitering or pinching the free Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, so yeah, even just little bits and pieces, offering things for trade if you do get into the game yourself, or make up some facilitating posters or something, it. letting yeah. the, just letting people know that your institution is cool with that. Yeah, but but you you will get people hanging around if there's there's <laughs> laws going off. But yeah, we, we we do anyway, and, and we encourage it. So magic. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Now that is all the time we have. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you very much to the panel. I hope you enjoy the rest of the packs. Good luck with your unknowns. Thanks, I just guys. want to say quickly thank to thank everyone for coming. I put my heart and soul into making this panel and thank you to all the panellists and the moderator for giving me their time to make this happen. This game's really changed my life and I love it and I love being able to share that experience with other people. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.